on everyone welcome back to the channel thank you so much for watching today my name is Savannah and if you're new here thanks for stopping by I'm happy to have you here as always we are back in Planet Zoo in Sakura Zoo building a dual primate habitat now this is a habitat that we started and built mostly on stream I did do a few bits and pieces like this main part that you're seeing now here the start I did that off stream but then the main chunk of it to be honest <laughs> all the rocks that you see placed are what I did on stream we had like two weekends of just placing rocks over and over and over again uh, if you're ever interested in watching me place rocks for a ridiculous amount of time I stream every Sunday morning that's what a way to promote my streams right but that's what we did we placed a lot of rocks uh, but back to what we're doing now this is the part that I did off stream and I really wanted it to be an older style exhibit so something that you might not see today in like for example I go to the San Diego Zoo a lot right because I'm based in San Diego I live here so it's my you know my hometown my home zoo they don't have enclosures like this anymore um, because these are very kind of old school kind of um, primitive I guess I, I don't know if I would necessarily call them primitive because the the exhibit that we have uh, created here is not necessarily a bad exhibit it's just kind of an older looking exhibit exhibit because now zoos try to get like a nice open view of the animals an unobstructed view of the animals and these bars that I've put up here um, would definitely obstruct the view of the animals you're looking at the animal through them right um, but in the traditional sense of a kind of an older style habitat I wanted this one to be kind of a, a step up habitat where there's like a moat in between that keeps the animal from you um, but then the enclosure slopes upwards away from the guest so it brings the animals up more to the eye level of the guests. Now originally when I was designing this habitat I was thinking just a single primate and I was thinking some sort of terrestrial based primate right so not an arboreal primate I didn't want it to do a whole lot of climbing I didn't want to have to worry about um, you know putting screening over the top or something like that so I didn't want to do uh, capuchin monkeys and uh, I didn't want to do what was the other one that I didn't want to do? I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, so I basically decided that I either wanted to do the gorilla or the mandrill, neither of which that I have built for before. And as I was building this habitat and when I when I put the barrier down or it might be just about now where I'm starting to think like, wow, this habitat's looking rather large. Uh, very common problem for myself and others that scaling in Planet Zoo is a bit difficult. So it was looking rather large to me when I put down the habitat barrier is when I realized like, yeah, I'm it is large. <laughs> I'm not wrong. I made this entirely too gigantic. So because I couldn't decide between gorillas and mandrills, I decided to do both. So we split it down the middle. So this would be a habitat in Socorro Zoo that could potentially have changed species over time. So, you know, they have different animals that have been in here over time. And right now they just have uh, the gorillas and the mandrills. So we end up splitting it down the middle, putting down some um, hot wire fencing. So it would be like, you know they couldn't climb over it uh, and then yeah making it a double habitat I'm really happy with this kind of curved front part that I'm working on here getting the terrain to work was a bit of a pain um, but making this curved part I'm really happy with because it means that I was able to kind of make a like an outcropping or like a, a separate section where you know there's the main path but then you kind of go off the path to go look at the animals something you very typically see in zoos uh, especially older ones that don't make you know very wide paths or, or smaller zoos that don't have a lot of space um, that way it keeps people from walking into the traffic and things like that um, so yeah I'm, I'm very happy with how it came out overall and um, I think that adding a primate to Socorro Zoo was definitely the right step. Um, like I said, I hadn't built for the mandrel or the gorilla before, so adding them into the zoo was pretty exciting. Um, and like I said, lots and lots of rocks. So what we are working on now is the basis of what would be like the dry moat that keeps the animal um, from getting to the guests. I did wanna make it look as, you know, I say realistically, 
uh, very loosely, or I use the term realism very loosely, but make it look like the uh, g uh, keepers, I almost said the guests, the guests should not be in the habitat, but make it look like the keepers could actually get down there for cleaning purposes. You know, a lot of the times the animals can also get down into that dry moat. Um, so making it look like that with all the rock work. Um, check in the traversable area. I think at the very end, the mandrills can get down there, but the gorillas don't. The gorillas have a little bit trickier of a traversable area. Um, but yeah, it turns out really well using concrete uh, at first. I left this in here just so you guys can kind of see, but we do end up taking it out. So I do kind of cut it here very soon um, because we end up removing the concrete and making it just dirt. I felt like you know, because originally, like I said, I was going for an older style habitat. I wanted it to be a lot of rocks, but then with all the concrete, it looked too cold. It looked too old and too cold. Um, so I decided to make it grass slash dirt with a lot of rocks because it's still kind of an older style habitat, but it looks more natural. You know, it looks more like it's suited for the animals and it looks like a much nicer space so overall i'm really happy with that decision but like i said i wanted to keep the some of that concreted work in there just so you guys can see the thought process maybe it sparks inspiration in you maybe you really love the concrete and therefore you know you can go ahead and build a habitat using that method but uh, for this one i think the natural habitat looked much better and now what we've moved on to is the back of the habitat. Again, I uh, lots of rocks. I'm gonna say that over and over again in this <laughs> in this time lapse. There's so many rocks, uh, but I love these rocks. I love the flexi colored rocks. In fact, actually, one thing now that I, I'm thinking about it that I would change is I would have liked to sink in some of the natural looking rocks. It's actually one of my favorite ways to add just a little bit more texture to the flexi colored rocks because too many of them. I mean, they don't get me wrong. I think this habitat looks great, but I think I could have added that just little bit of extra detail by adding in some of like the tropical rocks um, to give just a little bit of difference in the texture. Um, but just kind of lining the back of the habitat with the rocks. So, you know, this is all supposed to be like a fake facade, a man-made uh, habitat. Um, and using those plaster pieces, they do end up going away. I was just using the plaster pieces as a guide of where I wanted the back of the habitat habitat to be and then um, get rid of it afterwards. Uh, but yeah, just using these flexi colored rocks to make the back and then also to make this kind of like little overhang where it makes it look like the monkeys probably couldn't jump out or escape. Theoretically or ideally in a real world, you probably would have some sort of hot wire or some sort of deterrent up there for, for real animals, um, but we don't have anything that goes uh, horizontally like that. So I'm not able obviously to change the barriers and, and move them horizontally which would be the ideal case if we were talking about a real zoo. But now that we have the rocks out of the way, uh, I can't promise that there's not more rocks coming, but for now at least, we're taking a break from the rocks. Uh, we're moving on to climbing frames and climbing structures. You can see right there, I brought on a little reference picture because I can't do anything without my reference pictures. I mean, aside from Tali Zoo, Tali Zoo is the one that I don't really use reference pictures for, but for the most part for these speed builds and, and habitat builds, I definitely use reference pictures uh, in every single one. So just pulling out a bunch of pieces that I think I might want to use. Um, this is actually a really good tip for those of you that uh, struggle either with building or following a palette or sticking with the same color theme or something like that. I kind of generally will go through the menu and pull out items that I want to use and uh, it gives me a good starting point. So I pulled out a bunch of lighter colored wood pieces um, because I kind of wanted to go with a lighter feel rather than the habitat climbing pieces are some of my favorite pieces. In fact, I use them to build all the time, especially in Tali Zoo because it's a tropical build um, or a tropical zoo. I use those all the time. However, I wanted this one not to feel so dark. I wanted the climbing structures really to stand out. And as you saw very quickly, that reference picture that I pulled onto screen um, was all light colored wood as well. 
I also want it to simulate, you know, it's like bark that, or um, logs, I'm sorry, that the bark has all been pulled off of um, because, you know, the monkeys would kind of pick and, and pull things apart like that. So it's all kind of smooth wood. Uh, and that was just kind of the thought process behind that one. But making a little ladder so that they can get up here. The gorillas can, in fact, go on these climbing structures. Their traversable area, like I mentioned before, is just a little bit weirder i guess is the word um not as widespread does it, i don't know if i'm making any sense whatsoever but they can't really go on a lot of different things they need a lot of space because they're a bigger animal um but they can't actually go up on these uh these little platforms and we're making these platforms like this this one that i'm building right now this like little climbing structure with the rope pieces holding it together those are actually um they're more habitat pieces those are the what are they called? Like the dock, um, dock support pieces that we got with the aquatic pack. And then that little, that pallet is actually the bed that we got with the aquatic pack. So the gorillas don't use it as a bed, um, but they still use it as a, a platform, which is really nice, but it has the, the perfect color. The one thing I would say is I love that beam so much. The one that supports the, uh, the dock from the aquatic pack. I so wish we had shorter pieces. It only comes in this like enormously sized, <laughs> super long piece. And you can see here, it's not a problem because I can sink it a lot into the ground and hide it. But I so wish I could use it as an alternative building piece and other things if we just had like a two meter, you know, a three meter, or a one meter, a two meter and a four meter um, size like we do with a lot of the other pieces. So I'm kind of bummed about that because even the climbing habitat uh, structure pieces uh, have like the different sizes and things so I was just hoping that we would get uh, a smaller size for that one but like I said we make it work and it comes out um, pretty great I do I do think I I love the this kind of color scheme uh, light wood and and kind of the light and bright is what I was going for and then especially obviously once we add the plants and the trees and things like that I love it even more um, because at this point I'm starting to hate it less uh, with the climbing structures going in, but the trees, the foliage is what really brings it together. You guys hear me say that all the time is that I kind of hate everything I build until I add trees. It's just something about adding the greenery, something about adding that like pop of color, that natural look to it that really just, ugh, I just love it. Um, I do the same thing when I'm building in The Sims. Every single house has, uh, has a ton of plants. <laughs> I just envision every Sim I'm ever building for is like a green thumb and just loves plants all over the place. Um, it's kind of how my house is too, to be honest. Um, right now sitting at my desk, I have one, two, I have three plants directly in front of me and one behind me. Um, and that's just in my office. So I definitely, uh, I definitely like plants, I guess. <laughs> I just think they add something so much to a build or to the aesthetic of what you're looking at. Um, but anyway, uh, a little, uh, little plug. So if you guys do enjoy the speed build, we do stream every Sunday morning. We took a little bit of a break because I had to work. I went to Disneyland. Um, so the schedule is a little bit thrown off, but we are back to normal now. We stream every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and we stream for about two hours. Um, right now we're working on a snow leopard habitat for River Rock Zoo. So if you want to stop by, ask questions, or just hang out, that's where we'll be right here on the channel um, on Sunday morning. And I'm very excited for that. Taking two weeks off of streaming was way too long and I didn't realize how much that I would actually miss it uh, until I didn't stream and then we're back to it and I was having a blast last time. So hope you'll join us over there because it is, it's a lot of fun and I like taking your guys' suggestions and making you guys, you know, a part of the build and we're kind of building this together. So. I will say Socorro Zoo is probably one of my favorite projects right now. And as I'm trying to wrap up River Rock Zoo, I think Socorro Zoo might be the one that I kind of focus on next because I'm really loving this, like I wouldn't say under budget, but just kind of older, not as great and grand of a budget as River Rock Zoo is. 
And so I'm really enjoying like the aesthetic of Sakura Zoo. So that's probably what I'll focus on. No ideas, no plans for what's next. I'm a pretty sporadic builder where I do not sit down and think about like, you know, how the zoo is going to be laid out overall, what animals are going to be included. I literally look at it and go, hey, here's a blank space. I want to add a tiger. Let's add a tiger and make it work. That's, I mean, quite literally, that's my thought process behind adding animals. Or if, if a bunch of people say like, let's add the, uh, wow, now I can't even think of an animal. Let's add the gazelle most random animal to pop into my mind, but let's add the gazelle. Then I'll go, okay, great. Let's figure out how we can make the gazelle work. Um, so there you go, insight to uh, into my mind and how it works. It's, it's very sporadic and uh, so far it's worked. So I'm gonna keep with it, but <laughs> we'll just see what happens. Uh, I, like, I, so like I said, I have no, no plans, no ideas for uh, what animal is coming next to Socorro Zoo. So if you have suggestions, let me know because I'd love to hear what you guys, uh, what you guys have to say. Behind the scenes, I am working on a Disney vlog for you guys. So I mentioned I went to Disneyland a couple weekends ago um, and I'm actually going again in a, in a week. Um, I'm very, very fortunate to live very close and be able to get tickets and reservations. Um, but I filmed the whole thing when I went last time including some POV uh, of some of the rides and um, just, you know, footage of walking around, uh, some of the junk I ate, you know, just, just random little footage. So I'm gonna go ahead and put together a vlog for you guys. Uh, it might take me a while because I have about four hours worth of footage to uh, look through and edit. And, uh, you know, it's four hours. So if I was to just watch it straight through, it'd be a total of four hours, but cutting it, editing it, oh, it's gonna take me forever. I'm, I'm not actually very excited about editing it. I'm excited about watching it, but putting it together is going to be uh, very time consuming, but I'm gonna start working on that for you guys. Um, we have obviously this speed build is now complete and out because you're watching it right now. We're finishing up the snow leopard habitat will then be turned into a speed build video as well. And then I'm also working on a planet zoo tips and tricks uh, video, just kind of a build tips, my recommendations, what really honestly I'm, I'm aiming it towards being like my thought process behind uh, what I'm thinking when I'm building. Uh, so hopefully getting that out for you guys very soon. That one I'm taking my time with because it is my very first tutorial, but many, many people have asked for a building tutorial. And so I decided that that's you know, it's something you guys want to see. It's something I should probably do. Um, on the topic of tutorials, I know there are many out there. Delay Designer, Paulsley, um, Estan, and Drew, they all have wonderful tutorials out there and many, many more. But if there are any that you want to see me do specifically, uh, let me know. I'm definitely happy to kind of not copy or, um, you know, directly uh, take one of their tutorials and do it on my channel, but do it in my own way and maybe offer a little bit more insight or, or different insight, rather different perspective, different opinion on certain things. So let me know what you might want to see, what you're struggling with. Um, but then also, you know, if you do have little questions, I'm happy to answer those in my stream as well. If you come hang out. Um, but let's, let's talk about the animals. I've talked forever. I think this is the longest time that I've sat here and talked to you guys, uh, without talking about the animals. So let's talk about them. So I'm on the San Diego Zoo web page. That's where I'm getting my information from today. I realized in previous videos, I talk about the animals, but I don't really ever tell you where my information is coming from specifically. So I thought I'd add that today. But their site says, mandrills are the largest and most colorful of the old world monkeys. They're related to baboons and even more so to drills. Their furry head, crest, mane, and beard are quite impressive. But what grabs your attention is their bright coloration. And this is one thing I'll say, looking at pictures of mandrills in uh, real life or real mandrills, I guess, their faces seem a lot brighter to me than they do in Planet Zoo. I'm kind of underwhelmed by the coloration on their face in Planet Zoo. Let me know if you agree, because I just, I feel like, like they're really known for having that really bright red nose and, you know, the blue around, uh, around their, um, around their nose, you know, up their face. Um, and I just don't feel like it's that vibrant. Um, I know the females don't have quite as much coloration as the males do, but even the males looking at them, I feel like it, I feel like it could be brighter, but maybe that's just me. Uh, but then they say they have thick ridges along the nose that are purple and blue, like we just mentioned, red lips and nose, and a golden beard. It almost looks like they're not real. 
Um, kind of, sort of. They, they almost kind of look plasticky, fake, I guess, in, uh, in real life. <laughs> um, but then an adult male mandrel has the brightest and most distinctive colors on his face, and it seems to be something that attracts females. But that's not all. Those bright colors show up again on the mandrel's rear end. Why? Well, those colors impress the ladies. So there you go. That's exactly why they have bright red butts, because the ladies love it. <laughs> Zoo facts or animal facts. <laughs> ladies love bright red butts. Anyway, moving on to their habitat. Mandrels live in the rainforest of equatorial Africa. They have long arms and can travel long distances on the ground. So that's like I mentioned before. We're really uh, making this for terrestrial monkeys, not for arboreal monkeys. Um, they do climb trees though and even sleep there selecting a different tree each evening um, So they definitely can climb which is why they do have climbing structures in the habitats uh, But they're not going to spend most of their time in the trees like something like a capuchin monkey or a gibbon might do Mandrels come equipped with their own built-in carry-out containers They have large cheek pouches inside their mouth that they can stuff full of food and eat at a later time Sometimes they take their goodies to a safer location before enjoying them Male mandrels spend most of their time on the ground foraging for seeds, nuts, fruits, and small animals. Females and youngsters find their food in the trees. Oh, okay, so maybe they do spend a little bit more time in the trees than I was originally thinking. Um, but yeah, so that's a little bit about them. Um, we do have two animals to talk about and not a lot of time, so let's go ahead and, uh, and talk a little bit about the gorillas. So still on San Diego Zoo's website, the first part of the information just kind of says that the gorillas have been depicted in Hollywood movies as these like big, giant, ferocious, aggressive animals. Um, but it says the truth is they're peaceful, family-oriented, plant-eating primates that live in complex social groups. And that's something you guys may be familiar with. Obviously, we think that um, the gorillas are an ancestor of uh, us, of humans, and they do have very complex social social hierarchies, social um, groups, and, and how they work with one another. Um, it's actually pretty fascinating. Um, but they're the largest of all primates, the group of animals that includes monkeys, lemurs, orangutans, chimpanzees, and us humans, like I just mentioned. Uh, many people like to compare gorillas to humans, but there are several differences. Although they're able to stand upright, gorillas prefer to walk using their hands as well as their legs. Their arms are much larger than their legs, and, the, and gorillas can use the backs of their fingers like extra feet when they walk. This is called the knuckle walk. So they do this in Planet Zoo. If you watch them walk around, they walk on like their front knuckles um, to get around. And then talking about their habitat and diet, almost everything a gorilla eats is plant material. So life in the forest is like living in a huge restaurant. <laughs> I like reading from the San Diego Zoo's webpage because they make it fun. It's like, you know, it's described as kind of PRE. Um, it's not just like science and information based. I mean, it is science and information, but it's written in a fun way. Um, an adult male eats up to 40 pounds of food each day. That's incredible. That's the weight of my dogs. A gorilla large stomach can hold all the bulky food it eats and strong jaws help the gorilla chew through the stems. Gorilla food includes leaves, stems, fruit, seeds, roots, ants, and termites. So kind of omnivorous then, but mostly plants like it says. Uh, unlike chimpanzees, gorillas don't use tools to get their termite. Instead, they just smash the termite mound to get, a, get the tasty insects inside. So they don't have any patience. They said, no need for tools, I'll just destroy it. Anyway, that's kind of all the time I have for animal facts for you today. We are going to get into the end cinematics here, and I really hoped you guys enjoyed the episode. I really hope you enjoy the build. Let me know what you think down below. Leave a like if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you haven't already. All that kind of stuff really, really helps the channel, and I will talk at you guys in the next one. Bye!